It was not a day like any other. It was Jocasta's 18th birthday, and if the man she had loved since she was six years old didn't already know he had her heart, he would know it in the next few minutes. She took her brother's makeshift bridge over the river and cut through Flynn's olive grove rather than use the dirt road between their two houses, avoiding gnarled old roots that had twisted her ankles on more than one occasion. She had just washed from head to toe, and she had plans. Arriving at Flynn's house with dusty toes poking out of her sandals wasn't part of them. Her stomach clenched, and Jocasta took a steadying breath. This was it then. Everything finally coming together. Really, she shouldn't be so nervous. Wasn't Flynn practically a member of the family already? Her oldest brother's best friend? Someone she'd known quite literally forever? Besides, he was it for her. The one. She couldn't even remember a time when that wasn't her reality. She stepped over a fallen branch and headed up the field, Flynn's house a deceptively cheery whitewashed dot in the distance. He lived alone now. Old Hector was the last to go, leaving Flynn parentless, brotherless, and sisterless after a decade-long cycle of everything going wrong. Her heart had broken over and over along with Flynn's, but now she could finally help him. Wouldn't a family of his own be just the healing balm he needed after losing everyone? Despite her positive and logical thoughts, panic still thrummed in Jocasta's veins, descending like a swarm of locusts on her fast-beating heart. Fear of rejection grew with every step toward Flynn's, but it wasn't as though she were about to spring herself on him out of nowhere. She wasn't blind to signs or prone to inventing things out of sheer hopefulness. There was really only one way to interpret all the kind smiles and shared laughs, the near daily inquiring after her health and projects, the long private conversations down by the river between their two houses, and the frequent escorting her home, even when they both knew it wasn't necessary. Flynn's attentiveness wasn't new exactly, just different somehow. He had always looked out for her, and as independent as Jocasta liked to think herself, she had needed help at times. I slid down her spine and she slammed the door on the memory she mostly managed to avoid.